From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Three wildfires uh, threatening residents in this part of Montana this morning. Coming up, see how evacuations are being forced by a fire. Southern Madison County and see the danger posed by two wildfires near Wisdom and Wise River southwest of Butte. Extreme heat hits the west. I'm Michelle Medina with a blistering heat wave creating dangerous conditions. I'm Riley Carlson with why museums hope using old bat data can help prevent new pandemics. Well, happy Tuesday, Southwest Montana, 501. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. A live shot uh, from uh, Butte there this morning. A little breezy here in the yeah. uh, Gallatin Valley, which is not a good thing. Uh, it's really not. Now, the wind speeds overall are sitting in that 15 mile an hour range. It could mm -hmm. be a lot worse, but uh, usually the wind dies down this part of the day, yeah. and uh, we're not seeing that. And I think we're going to be dealing with windy conditions throughout the afternoon, that 10 to 20 mile an hour range. Mm -hmm. Certainly not a good thing for uh, several of the fires in no. the area. Uh, temperatures right now, uh, a little warmer than what we were yesterday. I'll talk about the uh, difference that we're seeing right now. A lot of 60s in uh, the area for the early part of the morning. A uh, good chance that we could see some isolated showers and thunderstorms. This around the noon hour, the mid afternoon, you start to see a few showers cropping up. I don't think that we're looking at uh, severe weather necessarily, but we may see some stronger storms in the area by the afternoon, uh, especially exiting uh, to the east. Daytime highs much cooler. This is a positive thing, but that morning temperature into the 60s is a little stifling mm. uh, for the early part of the day. We're going to break down your forecast, talk about air quality and much more, of course, in just a few minutes. Well, and all of that leads to our top story this morning, Matt. A fire burning in Madison County grew rapidly yesterday as it closes in on several campgrounds. Lightning caused goose fire is up to almost 2,500 acres, 5% contained. Dan's Cody Boyer made the trek deep into the closures began to show where the fire crews are doing to keep it from spreading. The haziness over Ennis and the surrounding area to the south, including here about 30 miles south of Ennis, has only gotten hazier with the goose fire. And just during that time, last night to now, the fire has doubled in size. We saw such a big increase in fire activity um, in the last 24 hours. Smoke from multiple fires lingers above Madison County, with some coming from 32 miles southeast of Ennis near the Hoodoo Pass. All right, I'm about a mile out from the U.S. Forest Service road that would take me to Cliff Point uh, Campground. And I am smelling smoke heavily. Fire crews ended their Thursday daily report with the fire sitting at 1,125 acres. In the next few hours, that fire bloomed to 2,214 acres. We had some pretty high winds, gusts up to 25 miles an hour, and that just really pushed the fire north. Alex Schweer, public information officer for the Goose Fire, says it's a dangerous combination of heat, dryness, and of course that wind, with the U.S. Forest Service closing the forest. Forest for now. We've got two helicopters out there today. Uh, they're helping with bucket work, so dropping water. Um, and then we have hand crews who are digging line in the area. How much further until the road closure? Campgrounds like Cliff Point, Hilltop, and Wade Lake are also closed. Many lined up only to be told to turn around. That fire is continuing to go up that northern side, um, the northwestern side of Cliff Lake. We're trying our hardest. We're focusing our efforts on that area. Schweer says the flame is still in a desolate area along Cliff Lake. No structures are threatened and no evacuations are in action. Again, for now. It's helpful if people can stay out of the area. Campgrounds have been closed just as extra precautions. Near the Goose Fire, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Two wildfires, one burning west of Wisdom, the other just west of Wise River, are concerning firefighters as they continue to grow and weather conditions get drier and hotter. It's extremely tough. Um, with all the, the dead fuel component that's on the ground, um, it's just too dangerous to put boots on the ground in there. The Trail Creek fire, about 20 miles west of Wisdom, was reported at about 2,000 acres, and the Alder Creek fire near Wise River was just under 300 acres as of Monday. Both fires were reported on July 8th. Helicopters are dropping water on them, but ground crews have been limited. We are doing the best we can with the resources we have. There are several fires around the nation, so resources that are, are at a premium. 
Crews are trying to direct the fire away from structures, especially in the Wise River area where there are some homes within a few miles of the fire. They are um, prepping some of those houses, going around having homeowners, you know, like move their wood piles away from their houses, anything flammable, get it away from your house, um, sprinkle your lawn. Well, I'm here at the Trail Creek Fire just west of Wisdom in the Big Hole Battlefield area, and there's a lot of spot fires burning in this area. In fact, the fire leapt across Highway 43, creating spot fires all along this route and a lot of smoke. One thing that's really important, um, when you are near a fire area and you see a lot of fire traffic on the roads, please slow down. Um, Highway 43 is extremely smoky. Um, between Wisdom and Wise River, um, it's just really smoky in the valley. A much larger Type 1 crew consisting of firefighters from the southeastern United States will be arriving here to take command of these two fires this week. In Wisdom, John Amy. MTN News. 506 now. Wildfires are burning in the west, intensifying because of high heat uh, hitting the region. California asking residents to conserve electricity today because the power grid is under pressure. CBS's Nichelle Medina reports this morning from Burbank, California. The Beckworth Complex fire is now the largest wildfire of the year in California, burning at least 20 homes in the northern part of the state. Fires are also charring land in Washington State and Oregon, where lumber from a mill ignited in Junction City. Firefighters say it will take a couple days to put out. But it's the bootleg fire near the Oregon-California state line that has neighbors to the south most concerned. It disrupted service on transmission lines that supply electricity to California. Drought and high heat have also contributed to concerns about the power grid, leading to a statewide plea to conserve energy. Dave Reinitz opted for a morning workout outdoors in the shade. While the oppressive temperatures have been brutal, he's doing what he can to beat the heat and conserve. I got a small place and so it's easy for me to, to keep it relatively cool and keep the windows open, have a cross breeze going and then when I have to, I turn on the AC. Records were shattered across the state the past few days. It hit 130 degrees in Death Valley on Friday, four degrees shy of the world record. It's very hot. It's very hot. It's unbelievably hot. <laughs> Relief can't come soon enough. A cooling trend is expected starting Monday night. Nishal Medina, CBS News, Burbank, California. 508 now in other headlines. Many questions still remain about the origins of COVID-19. Museums in Europe are now scouring their bag collections in search of clues which could help prevent another pandemic. CBS's Riley Carlson has more this morning from London. In the archives of London's Natural History Museum, curators are digitizing and cataloging an extensive collection of bat specimens. These bats, some decades, even centuries old, are a huge untapped resource. Getting their information online is part of a Europe-wide push to provide insight into the potential origins of COVID-19. We're sitting on a treasure trove of knowledge that is not fully exploited because it's not visible. Data from three bat families known to carry coronaviruses will be made available to researchers all over the world. Many scientists believe COVID-19 may have originated in nature and jumped from animals to humans. The more information that we have, not just about the virus, but about the species that may transmit the virus, I think it could be key in the interest of trying to understand how these events have happened. Information like where and how they live, how they adapt, or how close they are to people. Do you think that this information could potentially help predict when or maybe even where the next pandemic might break out? This would be a first step that will help others. A building block where knowledge is power and a first line of defense. Riley Carlson, CBS News, London. 510 now back here at home. Summer camp with some animals is in full swing, but limited capacity. Tien's Shaquille Kozar went out to Zoo Montana to see what's happening. 
Parents are eager to get their kids to summer camp at the zoo this year, but due to COVID-19 limitations, there's some things you should know. So really for us, the biggest changes is that temperature check. We're still doing the temperature check every day, and we figured we'd keep that not only because obviously it just lets us get a better idea on the pandemic, but it, why not have your kids healthy anyway, uh, even if the common cold or the flu or whatever is, 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 is out there. UALT said the zoo will also be requiring masks for kids while indoors. He said there will also be limitations on camp sizes. This year we decided to limit those camp numbers to 10 per camp. And believe me, if we could expand those, we would have. But again, we wanted to be as safe as we could. Just coming at back, you know, after this, this somewhat normal year as we kind of get into some normalcy, we wanted to be as safe as we can. Camp at the zoo started in June and will end in mid-August before the start of the school year. You all said that due to high demand this year, camp for summer has since sold out. Reporting in Billings, I'm Shaquille Kozart with MTN News. Oh, that shade there, Zoo Montana looks really oh, good, it looks it? nice, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't it? believe I'm scoping out shade. <laughs> uh, here we go, uh, 511. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, the NCAA now allowing student athletes to cash in on their names with paid endorsements. After this break, see how college athletes are already jumping in to the commercial market. Good time, Matt. Uh, it does look like yesterday the uh, warmest day of the next couple, the cooler for the afternoon. Air quality moderate across the area. We'll talk about wind direction, air quality, and much more coming up. Current time is coming up on 512. You're watching Montana This Morning.